Hi everyone, Evie here, the Greek goddess of great reading. Today I'll be reviewing Normal by Graham Cameron. He lives in your community in a nice house with a well-tended garden. He shops in your grocery store, bumping shoulders with you and apologizing with a smile. He drives beside you on the highway, politely waving you into the lane ahead of him. What you don't know is that he has an elaborate cage built into a secret basement under his garage, and the food that he's carefully shopping for is to feed a young woman he's holding there against her will, one in a string of many, unaware of the fate that awaits her. This is how it's been for a long time. It's normal, and it works perfectly. Then he meets the checkout girl from the 24-hour grocery, and now the plan, the hunts, the room, the others, he doesn't need any of them anymore. He needs only her. But just as he decides to go straight, the police start to close in. He might be able to cover his tracks, except for one small problem. He still has someone trapped in his garage. This book was super creepy, as you can tell from the plot summary. It's essentially from the point of view of a serial killer. And I don't know if that's ever been done before. It probably has by Stephen King or someone like that, but <laughs> this was just really well thought and the detail that went into the story. It was very detailed because this guy is narrating in his head what is happening. And I'm guessing for a serial killer, they are very meticulous about their details, so it would go as well into narrating the story. So every little detail is noticed about everything around him because he's always observing and always thinking about what needs to be done to cover his tracks. So that was very clear and evident in the narration that this guy has something wrong with him and he is very observant about everything around him. I know that a lot of covers are supposed to be reflections of what is inside the book, but I just wanted to point out this cover because it's essentially the trees in the woods that he tends to do some of his hunting of the women. And here though, it's very red down near these trees. And it kind of looks almost like veins or arteries, so it's very telling of what is happening inside this book and inside this forest and I thought that was really cool to have that displayed on the cover. But like I said, this book is crazy. I was reading it and I had gotten maybe to just the seventh chapter and he'd already killed three people. So I was just thinking in my head, how long is this going to go on? How many people has this guy killed? And how is he getting away with it? I guess that's the question most police officers ask themselves about serial killers, is how they're getting away with it, because they aren't able to find them. And most serial killers, police officers are looking for for many years, so I just don't know how this guy has managed, but you kind of figure it out once you're reading his narration. He's so meticulous that there's nothing he would have missed. But after a while, this book is sort of telling how this serial killer starts to kind of find his humanity because he actually starts to fall in love with a girl from the grocery store and he tries to go straight and not to do these things anymore and by the end of the book he does want to do that. He wants to f give all of this up for this girl but he still has that problem of the other girl in the basement and she's, he can't just let her go but uh, for some reason you think he would just get rid of her but He's having a hard time doing that now because he's come straight and he doesn't feel the same way he used to feel about going and just killing random girls that he meets. So it's proving difficult for him to kind of manage this new relationship and to manage his old work. Because I wonder, there's three girls in the book that are very important to him at a certain point. There's Rachel, the girl he's fallen in love with. Annie is a girl he meets that he plans on killing at first, but he starts talking to her and she's actually very friendly with him and she becomes one of his only friends and helps him out a lot. And Erica is the girl that he's keeping in his basement. And I started wondering, is he falling in love with all of these girls or is he just feeling compassion for them and starting to feel sorry for what he's done? It's not a very obvious transition that he's starting to feel sorry because he still gets those urges within himself to find someone and kill them, but it's a slow revelation as we get to the end, you realize that he is changing. You always wonder why serial killers do what they do and why they do what they do, and there are allusions in this book to his past, 
and why he might have started hunting girls and keeping them. He thinks it's normal because he's always done it and it's always worked, right? So the narrative kind of gave that away, but for the most part, I just thought he was super creepy and, inc and insane. As I got to the end of the book, it suddenly dawned on me that I didn't know the name of the main character, the guy narrating the book. And I read near the end, there was a Q&A with Graham Cameron, and the person asked him, why don't you name the main character? And he said it's because, like in Jaws, an alien, you don't see the beast, so you can create the beast in your head and fill in those blanks, and to you it's scarier because you're making that up on your own. And I thought that was true because for a while I thought he was this kind of middle-aged old man, and then for a while when he was dating Rachel I thought he was younger than that, so I couldn't quite picture him in my head because he's not described very well and he doesn't even have a name. It's kind of left up to you and your imagination what you want that guy to look like in your head and what you think is a picture of a serial killer. And I think it was really cool for Graham Cameron to do that for the reader because he's right. It's scarier when you don't know what's coming for you. I was very skeptical of this book at first, but not anymore. I highly recommend you pick up Normal by Graham Cameron at a bookstore near you. If you guys have read Normal by Graham Cameron, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. My Twitter and my bio are also linked in my SoundCloud below, as well as the music that is featured on my videos by my friend Lenny Papadopoulos. I've linked his SoundCloud page below as well. Hit subscribe if you guys like what you see and want to see more videos by me. I'm Evie, the Greek goddess of great reading, and until next time, guys, keep reading.